She said, she argued, I'm just being turned down because I'm white. If I weren't, if I were a member of a minority group, with my grades and test scores, I would have been admitted. Now, put aside the law, let's consider it from the standpoint of justice and morality. Is it fair or is it unfair? How many would rule for Cheryl Hopwood and say her rights were violated? So here we have a pretty even split. All right, now I want to hear from a defender of Cheryl Hopwood. You're basing something on that's an arbitrary factor. You know, Cheryl couldn't control the fact that she was white or not in a minority. And therefore, you know, it's not as if it was like a test score that she worked hard to try and show that she could, you know, put that out there, you know, that she had no control over her race. Good. And what's your name? Bree. There are discrepancies in the educational system. And majority of the time, I know this in New York City, the schools that minorities go to are not as well-funded, are not as well supplied as white schools. And so there is going to be a discrepancy naturally between minorities and between whites if they go to better schools. And they will not do as well on exams because they haven't had as much help because of a worse school system. So right. I yeah, let me just interrupt you to, to uh, tell me your name. Anisha. Suppose, just to identify whether there is a, is a competing principle here, suppose there are two candidates who did equally well on the tests and grades, both of whom went to first-rate schools. Two candidates. Among those candidates, would it be unfair for the college or university, for Harvard, to say, we still want diversity along racial and ethnic dimensions, even where we are not correcting for the effects on test scores of educational disadvantage. What about in that case, Bree? If it's that one thing that puts you know, someone over the edge, then it's, I guess that would be you know, justifiable. If everything else about the individual first, though, everything they consider about that person's you know, talents and where they come from and who they are without these arbitrary factors is the same. And your general principle is that admissions shouldn't reward arbitrary factors over which people have no control. Right. All right. Uh, well, first of all, uh, I'm for affirmative action temporarily, but uh, f what, for two reasons. First of all, you have to look at the university's purpose. It is to educate their students. And um, I feel that different races, people coming from different races have different backgrounds and they contribute differently to uh, you know, the education. And second of all, um, when you say they have equal backgrounds, they, that's not true when you look at the broader picture and you look at slavery. And these are, this is kind of a reparation. I think uh, affirmative action is a temporary solution to alleviate um, history and uh, the wrongs done to African Americans in particular. And what's your name? David. I think that what happened in the past has no bearing on what happens today. And I think that discriminating based on race should always be wrong, whether you're discriminating against one group or another. Just because our ancestors did something doesn't mean that that should have any effect on what happens with us today. All right. Good. I'm sorry. Your name is? Kate. Kate. Um, I just wanted to comment and say that. Tell us your name. Uh, my name is Mansoor. Because of slavery, because of past injustices, today we have a higher proportion of African Americans who are in poverty, who face less less opportunities than white people. And so because of slavery 200 years ago, and because of Jim Crow, and because of segregation, today we have injustice based on race. Okay. Um, I think that there are differences, obviously, but the way to fix those differences is not by some artificial fixing of the result. You need to fix the problem. So we need to address differences in education and differences in um, in upbringing with, with programs like Head Start and giving more funding to lower income schools rather than trying to just fix the results so it makes it look like it's equal when really it isn't. Yes. Well, with regard to affirmative action based on race, I just want to say that white people have had their own affirmative action in this country for more than 400 years. It's called nepotism and quid pro quo. So there's nothing wrong with correcting the injustice and discrimination that's been done to black people for 400 years. Good. Tell us, wait, tell us your name. Mm -hmm. 
Hannah? Exactly. I was going to say, if you disagree with affirmative action, you should disagree with legacy admission because it's obvious from looking around here that there are more white legacies than black legacies in the history of Harvard University. Well, legacy admissions is giving an advantage to someone who has an arbitrary um, privilege of their parent having attended the university to which they're applying. In the balcony. Go ahead. First of all, if affirmative action is making up for past injustice, how do you explain minorities that were not historically discriminated against in the United States who get these advantages? In addition, you could argue that affirmative action perpetuates divisions between the races rather than achieve the ultimate goal of race being an irrelevant factor in our society. And what, tell us your name. Danielle. Hannah. I disagree with that because I think that by promoting diversity in an institution like this, you further educate all of the students, especially the white students who grew up in predominantly white areas. It's certainly a form of education to be exposed to people from different backgrounds, and you put white students at an inherent disadvantage when you surround them only with their own kind. Why should race necessarily be equated with diversity? There are so many other forms. Why should we assume that race makes people different? Again, that's perpetuating the idea of racial division within our universities and our society. Hannah? With regard to um, African American people being given a special advantage, it's obvious that they bring something special to the table because they have a unique perspective just as someone from a different religion or socioeconomic background would as well. As you say, there are many different types of diversity. There's no reason that racial diversity should be eliminated from that criteria. Racial discrimination is illegal in this country, and I believe that it was African American leaders themselves when Martin Luther King said he wanted to be judged not on the color of his skin, but by the content of his character, his merit, his achievements. And I just think that to, do, to decide solely based on someone's race is just inherently unfair. I mean, if you, want to, if you want to correct based on disadvantaged backgrounds, that's fine. But there are also disadvantaged white people as well. It shouldn't matter Let if me you're add, white. Black. Tell us your name. Ted. Ted? Yes. Think of Hopwood. It's unfair to count race. Or, I assume you would also say ethnicity or religion? Yes. Do you think she has a right to be considered according to her grades and test scores alone? There, there, no, there's, there is more to it than that. You need to, universities need to promote diversity. And I so you agree with the goal of promoting diversity? Th there's ways to promote diversity besides discriminating against people solely based on a factor that they cannot control. All right, so what race. makes it wrong is that she can't control her race. She can't control the fact that she's white. That's the, that's the heart of the unfairness to her. Bree made a similar point, that basing admissions on factors that people can't control is fundamentally unfair. What do you say? There's a lot of things you can't control, and if you're going to go at, through it based on merit, like just based on your test scores, a lot of what you can achieve has to do with the family background that you raised it. If both your parents were um, scholarly, then you have more of a chance of actually being more scholarly yourself and getting those grades. And you can't control what kind of family you were born into. So All right, I mean, good. What, tell, that's, a, that's a great rejoinder. What's your name? Uh, da. Da. Ted, are you, are you against... Um, advantages that come from the family you were born into? What about legacy admission? I mean, I, I, I do believe that in terms of like a legacy admission, you shouldn't have a special preference. I mean, if there is a legacy admission you could argue is another part of diversity. You could say it's important to have a small percentage of people that have a, a several generation family, and family attendance at a place like Harvard. However, that should not be a, a fa an advantaged factor like race. That should just be so another should, part of di promoting diversity. Should it count at all? I think that... Alumni status, should it count at all, Ted? Yes. Uh, it, sh it should count. All right. 